Hello and welcome back to A Better World. This is your host, Mitchell J. Rabin, and we're very glad you're joining us again today. Today we're going to have another very interesting show. We have invited back Gilbert Renault from Vancouver. Gilbert has a background as a naturopath, actually originally as a dancer, uh, then a naturopath, massage therapist. But for the past number of years, after having studied the work of Dr. Hammer and the New Medicine, has really plunged himself professionally into the work of Dr. Claude Sabat and total biology. That will be the subject of today's show. We're going to speak about the basics of total biology, so virtually everyone watching will get some decent sense of what we're talking about when we discuss total biology, because yes, it's total, it embraces much, and there are also a series of specifics that when understood, help us all to heal faster, no matter what our professions may be, no matter whether we are bricklayers, it doesn't matter. There's a body of information here that has helped people, countless people across the world, heal in a very profound, in a sense, common sense way. That is why we have invited Gilbert back to discuss with us this most interesting approach to health and healing. Gilbert, bonjour. Bonjour, Mathieu. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Yeah. I'm fine. Glad yeah. to have you. Yeah, thank you for having me, and hello, everybody. Thanks. Yes, absolutely. Well, we'd like to have you talk about this and come to New York to discuss this matter because uh, there's a lot of pain and suffering out in the world, and yeah. whatever ways we can access to help people relieve that suffering, relieve their pain, relieve illnesses that modern medicine seems to have little handle on oftentimes, uh, is always welcome here at A Better World. So, uh, Thank you. Yeah. In that light, I know that your, your own history in working with clients has been really formidable, and there's been so much healing that has taken place uh, over the past six or seven or so years and you've been teaching that in New York in a certain format with us, and uh, people are deeply grateful for it. Um, what do you feel our audience should know about total biology, sort of taking it from the top um, in explaining some of the basics? Okay, first we can say total biology is a concept, a modality that helps us to see a person in its totality as a whole, and when we want to help a person to heal from a disease or from certain patterns, we need to see that whole. So what is that whole? Total biology teaches us that, okay? And Dr. Claude Sabat from Marseille in France is the first one that has been able to put all that together, and he took a certain uh, 30 years of deep work in order to put that together. Some parts, some components of total biology come from ancient knowledge that has been reintegrated today <coughs> in, in the concept of total biology. And Dr. Sabah is always a researcher that tries to integrate the good material of some other researchers. Uh -huh. so, so and the latest findings as well, found in <coughs> science and biology, etc. Exactly. Dr. Sabah keeps adding constantly something that can improve the system. So when we study with Dr. Claude Sabah, we always have to improve ourselves. And he always challenges the students and the practitioners to not sleeping on it, okay? <laughs> because people are alive, and we need to find always the best way to help a person. So I've heard Dr. Sabah <coughs> demands much of his students as he demands of himself. Right. So this, this is fantastic. Voila. Yeah. So what are the basic <coughs> points of total biology that yeah. one would first want to understand? Okay. First, there's a concept behind total biology, which is an illness is the brain's best solution of the person to keep that person alive as long as possible. It That's incredibly controversial. <laughs> yes, totally controversial. Ironic and paradoxical. Yeah. 
But total biology also brings an understanding system to, to see how does it make sense. So what is underneath? So we, we used to consider the human being like a whole, like a totality. And as a person, I have my parents. And I have a background, I have a genealogy, a family tree above me. When we want to help a person, we need to consider at least three generations above me. Dad and mom, my grandparents, and the great-grandparents. Sometimes we don't have access to the great-grandparents, but we use whatever we know. And everything that we know can be a detail that we use to help the person to shift in the healing mode. With the family tree, we use what we call the project purpose. So first, as individual, we are a biological being and we come from dad and mom. Dad and mom are not God, but in biology, they are like God because they are the creators of the child. So, And from the point of view of the child, they are perceived as God because it is because of the parents that the child, number one, has life itself. And number two, it's the parents that feed and nourish and house and love that infant. So, so that is very important to keep in mind what you just said. And because it's constantly there for the child. Right. So from the moment, let's say a little bit before the conception, the parents, they experience an ambience in their life with their siblings, with their work, together. What is the ambience of conception? Total biology teaches us that at the moment of the conception, we receive our biological mission in life. And then there are nine months of pregnancy. How does mom feel during these nine months? How does dad feel himself? How does dad make mom feeling during these nine months? We need to consider all this. And then delivery. Am I expected as a boy or a girl? What are the first words of mom or dad on me? And then the first year of the child. From conception to the end of the first year of life, we call that the project purpose. During that time, the first biological law is applied, which is the psychological conflict of the parents become the biological conflicts of the child. So, and what you just said, for the child, dad and mom are like God. If something happened to my parents while I'm in the womb, or during my first year of life, I risk to die. So the biological brain downloads from the parents into the baby's brain all the overwhelming conflict at that moment that the parents cannot handle. So this saves the parents' burden and make it lighter. So shares the conflict, shares the burden yeah. with the offspring. And at that moment, dad and mom feel a little bit released with that burden, so sure. they, they can keep working, bring the, the money and the food back at home, so we can feed the family. Feed the child, exactly. The family is safe, so the human species is safe. It's a biological program of nature. Okay. I want to add something here and, and kind of synthesize this. So what we see is essentially looking at the relationship of the parents prior to conception, actually, originally, and you mentioned the ambiance of conception. Well, the ambiance of conception is the ambiance of the relationship of the, of the parents yes. prior to, you know, the lovemaking, and then the lovemaking itself, and then the entire dialogue that is taking place between the mother with the uh, embryo, actually, starting then, then into the fetus, and the relationship ongoingly of the parents during the entirety of the pregnancy. Not to mention the larger extended family, everybody has an input, because the reality of the situation is that that mother and that uh, child in the womb are one. They are not separate, they're one being. So the blood from the mother, the food from the mother, the air of the mother, the thoughts of the mother, and the feelings of the mother, 
are the child. And I'd like to make a comment here, Mitchell, because what you said is very appropriate to what I'd like to add to Mitchell's comment, is when the child is in the womb, whatever the mother sees or wishes or suffers mm -hmm. for the baby's brain, it's me as the baby. So the baby doesn't make a difference if it's me or if it's mom. Okay, so exactly, uh, exactly. That's the idea that there, it is truly one. It's not like sort of. It yeah. is one, and then differentiates, of course, after the umbilicus is cut, etc. Later. So this is all in the domain of prenatal psychology. It should be said. Absolutely. And that actually brings up Gilbert, uh, sort of a historical point, which you mentioned when you said that Claude Sabat pulled from ancient knowledge. Um, so it's both ancient, because here we have a, bibl a biblical idea of the, you know, the sins of the father, or let's just say here, the uh, pulling out the moral part of it is the emotional conflict of the parents become the potential physical conflict of the child. So we also see that this entire form of inquiry is essentially Freudian. It's also part <laughs> Jungian. It's essentially a psychosomatic, psychoanalytic perspective on understanding the relationship of psyche to soma. Yeah, yeah. and the genius of Dr. Sabah with that knowledge, yeah. he used all the knowledge that he had from Freud and Jung, and he tried to apply it at the biological level to make it more comfortable to work with. Yes. Because if we remain at the psychoanalysis level too much, we don't use all the teaching that the body teaches us. Exactly. And it's so comfortable to work with the biological brain, the body part, and the emotional trauma at the same time. It's a triad that makes the, the work for the therapist very comfortable at helping a client. Definitely, so, definitely. And it's like he has taken the ideas of Freud especially, and of course, <coughs> to some extent, Jung, and has supercharged them and related them more to biological awareness and knowledge, largely based on the animal kingdom and observations that he's made therein and brought them to bear, no pun intended, and <laughs> there uh, is an area that Freud actually never really went deeply into, but Sabah has. Exactly, and Dr. Sabah has studied most animal behaviors in nature and he said he recommend quite often when we watch a documentary about animals to turn off the volume to see the, right. ina the animal behavior the way it is really in nature yeah. and when we watch that our biological brain record everything that makes sense for the biological brain and the biological human behavior yes, yes, yes. so I love this <laughs> I really do. It's just it's bringing together psyche and soma, psyche and the and the precious understandings that Freud had developed about the relationship of psyche, soul, and the body. And the psychosomatic literature of the 30s is very rich, except it only goes so far. And in my view, with my background in psychology, I see that what Dr. Sabah has done is taken it a quantum step forward based Absolutely. certainly on the work of Dr. Hammer where they have just nailed it down in a way that is actually rather irrefutable. Yeah. Uh, Would you say? I, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, I'd like to complete the little explanation earlier regarding the project purpose. Please, okay? that's so important. Because at the end of the first year of life, the biological brain of the child says, Whatever happened until now that I've recorded, I'm still alive. So it works. So that means let's repeat that by cycle all my life. So, so the biological brain will have a tendency to repeat by cycles what happened during the project purpose. The and first nine months of life. And this, the purpose is if I repeat that, I will be still alive and my parents will be still alive months after months in my life. Okay? Exactly. And we have to add at this moment that f when the parents hear about that law of the project purpose, many of our parents, of us, uh, feel guilty or feel responsible for the problems of our children. 
But in biology, we say there is no blame and there is no victim. They are just laws of the biology mm -hmm. because we are the children of our parents, but they have been the children of their parents who have been the children of their parents. So we can go... So the cycle goes. So far, yes. All what counts for the biological brain is the survival of life from generations to generations. Exactly. And it will keep using what works until it gets educated perhaps to another level and then it will apply that to see if that works. Mm. So what we've got always then, Gilbert, is a recapitulation okay. of the original situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is Freudian, <laughs> which is more than that, it's biological. So yeah. what are other aspects of uh, total biology that someone who's just sticking their nose into it for the first time would want to know? I'd like to complete the triad in biology that I use to help, uh, to help the clients. Sure. As we said we use the family tree, after that we use the project purpose, and after that we use the lifetime line. If a person came today at 50 years old, we say, okay, write the major dramatic events of your life from now until birth. And we use that lifetime line, the project purpose, and the family tree. And we have in these three components mostly everything to help a person to heal. It could oh. be quite a book that, that uh, outlining all that. Yes, it's a tremendous work. And the therapist, the practitioner in total biology, help the person with these tools, okay? And many other small tools in between. So okay. this is what we're referring to as the cycle of autonomy. When a yeah. person becomes free of their parents' um, shelter, food, and money, Absolutely. and has stood out on their own, yeah. stepped out, yeah. and then the brain that works in cycles by definition, then starts a new cycle. It sets the, yeah. the clock back to zero. Exactly. From the moment the person becomes independent from dad and mom, from food, money, and shelter, the biological brain set the clock resets back to itself. Reset the clock back to zero. And yeah. whatever I had experienced between zero and the first cycle of autonomy, let's say if I became autonomous the day of my 20 years old, at 20 years old, I start another cycle, and from 20 years old, let's say for between 20 and 21 years old, I will experience almost the same type of trauma that I've experienced between 0 and 1. I experience something at 25, it corresponds on the second cycle to something on the first cycle at 5 years old. Okay, So the goal of the cycle of autonomy is to help the client who has a, an important illness at 50 years old to understand that he, I had some trauma maybe at uh, 25 years old, 12 years old and a half, six years old and a quarter. Exactly. Okay? And we realize that after a while that we are like on a track. And it's not by accident that I've experienced today an illness or a pattern or a problem in my life. It comes from somewhere in my life. And the job is to identify it. And as we identify it, we allow the person to verbalize the emotional trauma and all the negative emotions that I went through. In a sense, what I really hear you saying and what I understand total biology to be doing in large measure from a um, kind of a therapeutic point of view, Joubert, is accessing the story, the inner secret often story of a person's inner life, of their thoughts and their feelings that they've kept so often inside themselves. Because one of the main points also is that we are as sick as our secrets. So, so six, uh, when important. we share our secrets, our inner life, and make it explicit, and make it available, we're actually giving it the shine of day, yeah. bringing it to light, and then it's a relief. And that yeah. relief is what allows the stress to reduce in the brain so that the possible disease process or program that would have otherwise gotten triggered doesn't actually have to. Yeah, 
fantastic, Mitchell, because he said, we are sick as our secrets, and to reach is one of his um, mentor in his life, Carl Gustav Jung, oh, yes. he said, what does not come back to my awareness comes back as destiny. So exactly. the secret is a little bit that we need to bring back into awareness. So maybe we can give some examples. Exactly. Um, now, w it, it should also be reiterated, I think, because one of the distinctions of total biology is this idea that we get ill um, and have the life that we have not based on external influences such as, let's say, um, too much uh, pollution in a given area or eating really bad food. Not to say that those don't have an effect. Of course they do. If we're dealing with a total holistic perspective, they can't not have an effect. But there's this idea also fundamental to total biology that the conflict leads away. So if we get to the emotional conflict underneath the illness, we're at, in a sense, its heartbeat, its core. Yeah, absolutely. So from that point of view, one of the fundamental things that shows up, as we know, Gilbert, is the conflict of separation. Child, infant from mother. Yes. Would you go on about that? So just to share with you a, a quick example of, um, of a child, a baby, who uses to be in contact skin to skin with mom. Mom breads, feeds the baby, and one day, for example, mom has to leave. She has to go outside the other side of the world. She couldn't bring the baby with her. Why not? Because <laughs> she was stuck with something. I'm she kidding. couldn't bring the baby. No. So, and the baby has been taken care, well taken care of by a nanny. But for a child, baby's, for a baby's brain, if he's not in skin-to-skin -skin contact with mom, it represents being in danger of death. So it's very important that my skin that used to be in contact with mom can reach out mom. So finally, after three weeks of stress of being away from mom, during that time, the baby cannot solve the problem of being separated from mom. But the, the nanny isn't the solution. It's not the solution. So the biological brain of the baby has to store the conflict into the subconscious and at the same time in the corresponding body part, which is the skin that used to be skin to skin contact with mom. So we call that the micro ulceration of the skin. Micro holes everywhere like to extend the skin to be able to reach out. It's the brain. The brain has only certain number of functions. One of it is that it can, through the ectoderm level of the embryonic layers, extend out, but it can only go so far. <laughs> it can actually reach mom, yeah, but it yeah. does the best it can. Yeah, because the biological brain cannot act outside the, the individual. Voila. So three weeks later, mom comes back. What does she do? She takes the baby back on her chest. What does the baby do? <sighs> Finally, I can't get in touch with mom. The baby has all kinds of symptoms. It becomes red, has fever, and the brain now can repair what has been micro-ulcerated by three weeks of separation from mom, which is an inflammatory process. More blood here that brings nutrients to restore that micro-ulceration. And that's, that's a healing process, that's right? That's a healing process. And in medicine, that healing process is called eczema. Eczema is the repair phase of a conflict of simple separation. So in other words, what looks like an illness in the ordinary view of medicine, from a point of view of total biology, Gilbert, is actually the healing or repair phase. Yes, yeah. uh, we call that a, a repair phase or a recovery phase. Or recovery phase. But this is really radical. Like I said at the beginning, yeah. it's controversial. It's controversial because it's an exact 180 degree different perspective yeah. on the same phenomenon. Yeah. So now we have people, who we know eczema is a repair phase, but they can't get rid of the eczema. Why? Yeah, right. Because they remain at a percentage of conflict. They didn't solve completely the conflict or they didn't bring enough awareness. Because today I've been separated from somebody dearly loved and at 50 years old. But 25 years ago, I had experienced another separation that I have never grieved. And it's still oh. in the back of my mind. So this you never is what? completed the grieving and the issue then. Absolutely. So it comes okay. back. So taking that little baby, 
if that baby does not complete its complete stress release at the seeing of the mother again, but harbor something like, oh my God, is she going to leave again? Then that could be continued into life. It, it, it's quite possible. It, it, but that's the setup. That, for that, that, that's the setup. But if, for example, mom takes the baby back and says, my darling, mom is there and she will never leave you again. And don't worry, my darling, mom can handle that. At that moment, the baby is very well secured. Uh, at that moment, we have upgraded the chance to not to create another pattern for the future because we have the child yes. to grieve it right here, right now. Perfect. So what will also happen is through that communication, brain to brain, so to speak, and heart to heart, if you will, of the mother to the infant, the infant gets the message that it really is secure, that mommy is not going to leave again. The eczema will come and be expressed as a function of stress prior, but it will disappear. The very eczema quickly. will disappear quickly. Very quickly. And let's just hold all variables constant, will not reappear. Should not reappear. Should not reappear. If the eczema reappear, it is because the child goes through another repair phase of simple separation. Got it. Because we're human beings and we can experience separation from time to time in our life. But we do and will actually. Yes. But it won't be from that original episode that will have been in a sense cleared. Pr probably. Probably. To, I mean, but that's the idea. This is the idea. Okay. But we always need to come back to it later just to secure just to that see. is over. Okay. Well, I <laughs> hate to say that this is over now because uh, this has been fabulous. Yeah. This yeah. has been a real interesting lesson, and I so appreciate you. I Shibara. thank you, Michelle, for having me, and you're a great uh, um, interviewer. <laughs> you know your material so well. <laughs> well my teacher, so. <laughs> Merci. You're very welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. And uh, this is Mitchell J. Rabin for a Better World. And I look forward to seeing you all.